Good afternoon and good morning. Welcome to those that have joined us. We will likely have others that join us as well. We've got about 70 folks that have said that they wanted to be a part of this and in some cases maybe listening to this because we are recording it and we're going to send it out to everybody. So if you're able to make it live with us today, wonderful. If you're listening to this in post, hello to everybody. And if you do have any questions as you as we go through this, those that are live with us today, please throw them in the chat. Anything that we can answer in the Q&A, we're happy to do that at the end. I think we may have anticipated some of the questions as we're going through it. So hopefully we hit them. If not, please write in your question. Happy to answer those. I've got my colleague Elizabeth with us in the background today. And uh, Jane, we're happy that you're able to take time out of your day and join us. We're gonna try and contain this to about 30 minutes, respectful of your time. And uh, we wanna make sure that we uh, give you a good overview of the program itself. You're looking at Kingston, looks like this today. It's gonna to be a high of 24, beautiful day today as we glide into October. Uh, this is the Queens campus, uh, lots of different faculties that are here, arts, engineering, medicine, law, Etc. And then, of course, we've got our business school, which is uh, something that we're going to talk about today. This is the accelerated MBA for business graduates. First question we always get, do I have an accelerated MBA written on my degree? MBA from Queens. That's what you get. And uh, that's what uh, you are earning and working towards, for sure. My name is Glenn Hollis. I'm the director of the program. And first thing you should do is you go through the journey of which MBA do you take? Um, first thing to check for, does your business school have a Starbucks? And we do. You can see bottom right there, we've got a Starbucks right in Goods Hall, which is the Queen's Business School, Smith School of Business uh, area. Beautiful, beautiful building, old meets new, and uh, just a wonderful facility as well. And I'll also tell you about our state-of-the-art studios that we have downstairs, um, which is how we deliver some of this program in the hybrid format and fashion. So let's first acknowledge, this, especially now, um, it's been a tremendous weekend for awareness uh, and understanding and hopefully steps towards reconciliation. We acknowledge that the Smith School of Business at Queen's University is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. We're grateful to be able to live, learn and play on this wonderful place called Turtle Island. So if I could bottom line this, uh, the elevator pitch, as they call it, Queen's MBA, one year, while you work, stay in your city. And uh, again, it was designed 15 years ago exactly for this. You've already got your undergraduate in business. You already have work experience. You are working. And this is very much about how do I get that thing that I've always wanted, or in some cases, feel you need, um, or both. So we'll talk about that. So hopefully you're looking around. Uh, we always like that you do. It's uh, always a good idea to see, you know, the other MBAs that are out there. We're very proud of our MBA and uh, hopefully it's the right choice for you. But when you think about an MBA, which one to do, think about flexibility. Is this something that I can manage around my life? Life means work, life means home. Um, but again, how do I add school to that? And then when you think about the perspective, the diverse perspective is based on you know, something that's more than just a single city. Um, and there were those that work in that, you know, greater city area. But this is uh, very much a pan-Canadian experience. And uh, that's something that we're proud and very uniquely offering uh, as part of this MBA. And then preparation and support. Are you going to be supported through your MBA? Is this going to be something where you've got access to very, very keen and interested alumni, as well as faculty, as well as coaches? And the other area to look at is team. We are set up in teams. Of course, there's going to be casework. Of course, you're going to do business cases from Harvard Business School, from Queen's University, professors that here, uh, here that have developed those. But it's also very much a team approach. You work on a team, you interact with the team, and then you work with the other teams across Canada, the 15 teams we're going to have as part of this program. And then you're buying the reputation. That's a huge part of the return on investment. And the reputation you buy, the colleagues that you'll meet, the relationships that you'll build are all very important. So look through these elements as you think about which MBA do I do. Flexibility. Let's break this down a little bit. It is about time and cost. You don't need to stop working. There's no opportunity cost for leaving work. It's very much about staying focused on what you're doing, but also now adding school for that one year. 
And this 12 month program is designed where you're gonna be on teams right across Canada and even in some cases, virtual teams that we've added. And this is very much about a program, an MBA that is well-ranked and well-regarded in the industry. So the way that we do this is by having boardrooms across Canada. We also have virtual boardrooms that we added exactly what we're doing in the executive MBA and the MBA of the Americas, the joint Cornell Queens program. But we've got boardrooms in Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, downtown Toronto, Markham, Mississauga, Ottawa, Montreal. And the teams that we have there, along with the virtual teams, form your cohort, your year. And we are very much uh, approaching the end of our recruitment, but we do have seats still available in uh, most markets. And we've got about 98 of 110 seats that we're planning, but we do have seats um, across and we have the opportunity to add other teams as well. So it's not too late. Um, this is uh, an opportunity for a January 2024 start, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. So the perspective that you're going to get is based on the jobs and sectors that people work in different industries, job titles, but it's also based on geography, where they are, what they do. We can pull in the oceans when you think of ocean technology, agritech, proteins, lots of things going on on the coast, and uh, we are represented coast to coast to coast when it comes to this uh, MBA. Lots of different backgrounds, geographically, as well as diversity within industries. This is the group that we had in in January. We have in now for this year. We had them in in January for two weeks. You come here to Queens, to the business school, two weeks in January. Um, everything's included in the program, books, uh, you know, your fees for uh, your courses, all of your swag and team wear, coaching. Um, I'll talk about the four types of coaching in a minute. Uh, your hotel room, top level food. It's very much an executive program. And this is the group. And then we have them back again for a week in June. And this is them in June. Great group. This is them running around the campus doing uh, what we call the Smith Challenge, where they were bonding and building. And lots of networking that goes on, high performance teams, resilience training. But it's an opportunity to make colleagues that you will have relationships with for the year and, and well beyond that, in fact and very much about the wider group that you'll connect with in terms of the alumni. This is a profile of the class itself that I just showed you. 40 different, 40 plus different undergraduates. Everybody like you comes in with an undergraduate in business or the equivalent, um, and they often have BBAs, BCOMs, uh, economics degrees, uh, or they've taken arts, but they've picked up or engineering or life sci. Um, health sciences, and they've picked up courses in the business world as well, or in the business space. So we also are represented by universities, undergraduates in the U.S. and internationally. And the students that we have in this year, 103 amazing students you just saw, so many different industries and sectors and uh, jobs and job titles that are represented. And we've got about seven years of average experience. You need at least two but some have 10, 15 years. On average, sweet spot tends to be around the six, seven year, uh, as 10 year mark. And again, I mentioned the virtual teams, exactly what we're doing in the other executive MBAs. This is very much represented central team, West and an East team. And it's pulling in some people that are doing some amazing things in industries where we may not have a hard boardroom, but this allows us to even add that much more uh, I'll call it texture and value to your MBA by pulling in people from other industries and other, other sectors. Coaching. So this is a focus on coaching that we've got here at this MBA at Queens at the business school here. Very different, very unique. It's not in any other MBA. Team coaching. Right away, you're going to meet with a team coach in January. Your team will set out the rules of engagement, how you work together, how you communicate, how you get the work done. Half your grade is teams, half is individual. So a lot of focus on teams, but we put a lot of support to the teams itself. And you are able to lead cases, assignments, projects, and then in some cases, you'll support your team members. Halfway through, you will do a review, a peer review on each other, a 360 review. How do I become a better, stronger team leader and team supporter? We've also got executive coach. You pick your executive coach. And these are people that have been, think of them as mentors, 
They've been in business 20 plus years, different industries that are represented. What was their journey? How can they help you on your journey? And this is an opportunity for you to really, you know, tap their brain, their experience in terms of how they navigated their career and their life. Lifestyle coaching is another facet of coaching. And this is where we acknowledge and in fact, celebrate the fact that good, strong leaders have a strong underpinning in nutrition, fitness, and mental health. And you're going to work with coaches that we have through the year. In fact, one of your coaches is going to be somebody that teaches resilience and resilience mapping. And this is an individual that works with the Canadian Olympic Committee and with military uh, organizations to really help build resilience and use pressure and use it well. And then finally, career coaching. You are going to have one-on-one -on -one hours and time throughout the year and even well beyond that into your, into your life after that um, with a coach, a career coach. And these are professionals that have worked in various industries. In fact, the career coach that supports the accelerated program is the former people uh, leader at McKinsey Consulting. So a very strong experience in that space, but also in other industries as well. But when it comes to career coaching, there's many different areas. One is primarily, as I talk to people, and you included most likely, how do I use my MBA where I am? I'm not about leaving my company. Um, some of you are. Some of you are ready to pivot now or eventually. But most of you are interested in understanding, how do I be seen as a high potential? How do I use my MBA where I am now? And that's exposure to different things, opportunities, advancements, and promotions. How do I get there? How do I negotiate salaries? How do I build up my brand? You're also going to have exposure to industries if you're interested in pivoting now or eventually. Roundtables, information sessions, panels, and jobs. There are many jobs that are made available to you. And as a Queen's Business School MBA, uh, obviously, you're very attractive when it comes to uh, employers looking at you, especially because you've got work experience. You add to that a Queen's MBA, and it really is a powerful package. So we had many that have, in fact, pivoted through the year when they're going through their MBA or after the fact as well. So there's many, many things you can talk to uh, your coach about and coaches about. But when it comes to the Career Advancement Center, this is an opportunity to explore how do I advance where I am? How do I be seen as a high potential, a hypo? Or if I'm ready to pivot now or soon, how do I do that? What should I consider when I look at salary negotiation and other elements? And again, any questions that you have, please feel free to throw it in the Q&A. So this is just a, a snapshot of a few, believe me, not exhaustive in terms of where we have our uh, Queen's MBAs, our, our accelerated MBAs from. Um, this is the group represented this year. And I've already had a chance to put together slides that look at this incoming class in January, 2024, your class. And it is a profile that's almost identical with some other industries that are not represented here, but it's a really good group, small business, large business, entrepreneurs, matrix companies, for-profit, not-for-profit, uh, so many different organizations and groups that are represented. And within that, different jobs. So, of course, we've got the big five banks, but you may be in wealth. You may be in uh, uh, private management. You may be in strategy. You may be in branch management, retail. So, so many different uh, areas that are represented for sure. The team approach. I mentioned the team coach. We look at and we use the team coaches and the team format in a very, very a significant way. Um, you're going to be on the same team for the full year. We put a lot of due diligence and care into putting the right people together. Psychological analysis. We have you all fill out something kind of like a Myers-Briggs, where it's a psychological assessment of skills, uh, aptitude, strengths, weaknesses. So we put people together that complement each other, can work well, fit, can be a great nucleus of how you build out a strong team. And that's something called the big five uh, personality analysis. But you work with your coach. I'll give you the full year at a glance when things are happening, uh, when the courses are starting, when they're stopping, assignments that are due. And you can understand how do we work together? How do we build a strong, effective team? And that's something that is intentionally translatable to the business world. You are going to work on teams. You probably work on teams now. 
you probably lead teams or will lead teams. How do I do that? How do we become a better, stronger, more strategic leader? And that's a lot of what we put into this MBA. The other thing that you are investing into, so think of this as your return on investment, is the reputation of the school. Well, we don't chase rankings. We certainly find ourselves at the top or near top of many publications in Canada, US, internationally. But what we do chase is membership in two organizations, the AACSB and the EFMD Equus. And you need to earn membership into these annually by submitting surveys and feedback from students, by proving that you are adhering to the learning outcomes that you've set out through the Senate and the faculty board, and also through professor rankings and reputation. How are they performing from a teaching aspect? How are they performing from a consulting and from a research aspect? So we need to prove our membership and value in these organizations. And we have been longstanding members with these organizations. And we join a, a, a significant group around the world that's a member in these two organizations. The reputation and the connections continue. And this is a huge part of your return on investment. There are many, many Queens alum in different faculties that I mentioned, arts, science, uh, engineering, law, medicine, you name it. And of course, business, 180,000 plus Queens alumni around the world, 26,000 Queens Business School alumni. So there's a great chance that somebody's in your city, wherever you may be zooming in from today. And there's probably a very good chance that you're going to hire, be hired by, work with another Queen's Business School alumni. So we do this, we perform this magic, if you will, this MBA through a hybrid approach. I mentioned you will be here for two weeks in Kingston at Queen's at the Business School. And those two weeks happen the beginning of January. Then we have a week in June and a final week in, in this case, it'll be Toronto next year. But in between there, we deliver a hybrid approach. So you will see uh, that we've got studios, and I'll show you them in a minute, but studios in the Queen's Business School where you're able to hear live lectures, the professors are delivering, there's lots of discussion and debate and interaction, and it's a wonderful opportunity to stay in the city that you're in, stay working, but still get the benefits of the Queen's Business School. So requirements, let's talk a little bit about that. And that's a question we often get. So you need an undergraduate in business, commerce, or related field. Uh, and the website will spell this out in more detail. Minimum of two years work experience. No GMAT is required because look at the first two. You've got experience and you've got an underpinning in business, which is also why you're able to go into what might be considered the second year of a two-year MBA. It's a one-year MBA and you are really at that next gear level. It's not repeating anything you did at the undergraduate. It's intentionally the next area and focus of business in all the different areas that you are familiar with. Economics, finance, accounting, marketing, organizational behavior, strategy, uh, all different elements for sure. And you can see those as we'll go through it. The application process is very straightforward. You talk with a human. Carrie is waiting. I'll give you her email at the end but a uh, very simple approach. Um, and it really is your resume, initially your unofficial transcripts, eventually your official transcripts from your undergrad, references, a cover letter, and critically, an interview with me. How do you fit as a team member? And do we fit to you in terms of what you're looking for in your MBA? And that's something that's very important because we wanna make sure that we've got proud alumni, successful alumni as they move forward. In fact, in many cases, I ask you to come back and be a part of sessions like this or the coffee mentor for next year's incoming class. So there's lots of opportunity to interact during the year. And in perpetuity, we intentionally build a very strong network and alumni group so that you are going to be part of the Queen's Business School forever. And that's intentional. But as you apply and as you enter, we want to make sure that we've got a good fit between ourselves. Um, you to us and us to you, for sure. We've got students from all over. I mentioned when we opened up three years ago to add in virtual teams, 
it complemented everything that we're doing um, with the hard boardrooms in Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, downtown Toronto, Markham, Mississauga, Ottawa, Montreal. We're able to pull in people from just amazing places doing some amazing things, including Indigenous communities, where we have been able to work with students and bring them into the program. And fantastic opportunity as they build and apply reconciliation funding to their community. How do they use their MBA to build out those areas? And that's a wonderful opportunity um, and flavor and context of, of Canada. So I mentioned this is the Queen's campus in all its glory and beauty right down on the lake. Um, a great community in Kingston. You are going to be here. Um, we intentionally bring you in here. If I were to glance over to the left on the screen, this is where your business school is. I mentioned old meets new. Um, tremendous school, great faculty that are part of it, very accessible faculty that are keenly interested in the accelerated MBA because they love teaching with you or to you, with you, for you. Um, again, because you bring in all of your experience and discussion, and debate from your area of expertise around Canada. And it's a great robust opportunity in the sessions, which is why we intentionally create these on-campus moments throughout the year, two weeks in January, a week in June, a week in December. And then in between there, we've got what we call the learning Two state-of-the-art studios, patterned after Harvard Business School, eight cameras in each studio, two smart boards. You can see here one of the studios, the control panel, that our technician is looking into the studio at Professor Catherine Brom. And Catherine Brom is carrying on a live lecture. So think every other Sunday, all day, half day Monday, so twice a month. And if I were to flip that around, now we're looking at Catherine Professor Brahm, as she is looking at all of the boardrooms, you can see all the boardrooms, you can see each other, interactive digital hand raising. In this case, we've got a student, her name is Jackie Hilton, bottom left. She's from the Calgary Airport Authority, up pops her background. Professor Brahm can see her. She is the manager of cost sustainability and innovation at uh, Calgary Airport Authority. And all of the students can see her and you, get to see all the other boardrooms as well. And that's a major advantage, which is why we intentionally invested significantly in this very interactive space. This is not simply a Zoom uh, projection um, or recorded, even though we do record it so you can look at it after. This is very much a live, really, really chewy situation where you're able to have a good debate and discussion. So, as I sum up, think of any questions. Hopefully I've answered all of them, most of them. Uh, I welcome connecting with you for sure. But when you think about your MBA, it's, a, it's an important step. It's a big investment. It's a big step in your career. Uh, it's a major you know, opportunity to accelerate your career, whether you need it because you want to get to the next level, you always wanted it. Um, just many different reasons that uh, people choose their MBA. Flexibility is important diverse perspective, not just a single city perspective, but a wide pan-Canadian approach. Preparation and support, faculty that are accessible, supportive team coaches, supportive administrative team leaders, directors like me that are keen and interested to see you succeed. The team approach, we are unique in the team approach. And that is something that we're very proud of. Yes, you're gonna do cases, but it's done in the context of, of teams, Half your grade is teams. A lot of focus on building teams, building out strategy, building out leadership, and making you a well-honed and developed leader on the team side. And then, of course, look for a school. If you're going to invest money and time, sweat equity, pick a school that's got a reputation that's strong on the national and international uh, uh, platform. So that, those are the things that you think about the checklist of what do I want, what do I need, how do I go about really finding out my MBA? I'm happy to answer questions as we go through it. But I'd also encourage you to start. Start with Carrie. There's her email. She's a human. She's wonderful. She was actually the program manager for the Accelerated MBA for 10 years. So she knows the program well, can answer questions, start the process. And it starts with your resume and unofficial transcripts and a conversation. And that's an opportunity for you to 
really understand, is this the right fit for me? Do I need to uh, do things as far as my application? And Carrie can help you with that for sure. I see we've got a couple of questions, which is great. Any questions that you have, I'm mindful of keeping this to around 30 minutes, but I'm happy to continue as we get questions. I'm also happy to talk to you and, and connect, and I look forward to interviewing with everybody. So let's take a look and see what we've got in the Q&A area. Melo, hi, do you accept international applicants? Yes, 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 we do, absolutely. We've got um, applicants and students that are from uh, all over the place. Um, and again, um, most of our students are working in Canada or they're in the North American time zone. Um, international applicants, um, we do have students here that are on a work visa or a study visa in Canada. Uh, most of our students, 98%, live and work in Canada, and uh, they work for a Canadian or international company. Now, you may find yourself here for a work uh, opportunity from an international company, or in some cases, we had students, for instance, they worked for an oil company uh, in Alberta, and they happened to be in Texas, where they had one of their subsidiaries, and that's something that we've got as well. I've got two students coming into your year, starting in January, that are actually, one is from Saudi Arabia, one is from UAE, and they happen to be here for various reasons on a work and study permit. Hi, Glenn, thanks for the presentation. You're very welcome. Uh, I had a question with regard to the application GMAT. If, for example, I completed the GMAT and sent it to Queens along with my application, that'll strengthen it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you had a, a good GMAT, um, absolutely does not hurt. If you've gone to the, the effort, because many schools uh, require that, we look for experience. We look for a strong GPA when it comes to your undergraduate. And if you've written your GMAT, wonderful. We'll look at that as well, for sure. Uh, is there any flexibility around the course requirements to have a B in all undergraduate? There is. I mean, we look at, uh, we look at work experience. We look at the undergraduate. Yeah, and if you've got some courses that are softer, a C, whatever it might be, but you've got A's in others, we look at the amalgam of courses. Um, we also, in some cases, have students that say, you know what, um, I didn't get this course, I didn't do this course, or I didn't do well in it. And there's an opportunity to build up your strength in that course, um, you know, through taking online courses. Um, but Carrie can walk you through all of that. And I'm also very interested in your team fit, which is critical to this MBA, and your work experience, which adds so much flavor and, and uh, context and dynamics to the business case discussions that we go through. Uh, is there any flexibility around the requirements? Yeah, we talked about that. I think that's all I see for the questions. Anything else that you think of as I'm finishing this off, throw it in the Q&A. But again, bang on 1.30 or, or sorry, 12.30. And uh, or it may be 11.30 or 8, 9.30, wherever you might be from. Uh, but again, thank you for taking the time. I know it's a quick road trip through the, the, you know, the overview of this accelerated MBA. Lots of information on the website. Carrie is a man magnificent resource for information. And I look forward to talking to you. There's always interesting context around people's backgrounds and uh, the group that we've got here. Um, any spaces left for the program for next year? Uh, Kyle, yes, absolutely, Kyle, uh, there are. Uh, we've got seats in most markets, um, and I'm happy to talk to you about that. And again, we just had a tremendous response. We had some that were on a wait list, some that were deferred from previous years. We're going to have two Olympic athletes once again in this program. Every year, we've got Olympic athletes uh, as part of our business partnership with the Canadian Olympic and Paralympic Committee this year. Uh, we have a, a, a triple medalist, um, one of our uh, female hockey players that's in the program this year. We have Brad Gushu, gold medalist, curler for those that are curlers. Uh, Tessa Virtue has been in the NBA program. So it all adds to the, to the you know, robust opportunity in terms of who you'll work with uh, and a strong focus on teams. But Kyle, yes, we've got room in uh, most cities and I'm happy to talk about that for sure. So listen, thank you for your time. Any questions that come up, I'd love to talk to you. Carrie's tremendous. So I want to thank you for your time and for being a part of this. And Elizabeth, thank you in the background. And we will talk with everybody, I hope, very soon. Take care. Stay safe.